In our time, full of events and challenges, the main cudgel of most nuclear powers are ballistic missiles, traveling the depths of the sea inside submarines. And these submarines must be top notch. British, French, American and of course Russian. 170 meters long, 24,000 tons in displacement and 16 ballistic missiles with nuclear warheads. This is how you can briefly describe the main member of the modern nuclear triad of Russia. Today on the horizon, the Bore surfaces. At the beginning of the 21st century, ships of two projects formed the basis of the strategic submarine component of Russia, the Delta IV and the Typhoon. The Delta IVs are veterans, large submarines with ballistic missiles hidden inside the distinctive hump behind the wheelhouse. A series of seven boats originated in 1984. The Typhoon doesn't need much introduction. A monster with a displacement of 48,000 tons equipped with 20 huge launch silos has become a real symbol of the Soviet fleet and the Cold War. From the 1981 to 1989, six boats were built. But both the Deltas and the Typhoons are already outdated both morally and physically. The few remaining ships in the ranks can no longer meet the challenges of our time. This problem began to be solved already in the late 1980s when the Navy started considering the concept of creating a new boat, which could in the future become a kind of single strategic carrier, replacing various old models. The original idea was quite conservative, they didn't want to make another monster like the Typhoon. It was planned to create a submarine close to the Deltas, only with reduced dimensions of launch silos for the new SSNX-28 Bark ballistic missiles. So, within the walls of the Rubin Design Bureau of Marine Engineering, a submarine was born, which received the project name 955 Bore. The construction of the boat was entrusted to the Sevmash plant located in Severodvinsk, the most obvious candidate. Practically a city with 30,000 employees and a giant production hangar, 74 meters high and 130 by 430 meters in area. The entire Liberty Island could be placed under it, except perhaps the hand of the statue wouldn't fit. Birthplace of the majority of the Soviet submarine fleet, including the giant typhoons. The first ship was laid down in 1996 and the launch was planned for 2006, but the deadlines, even such long ones, could not be met. The main problem was the missile. The Soviet response to the American Trident II couldn't reach the service in the Navy. After the collapse of the USSR, funding was sharply reduced. Due to the destruction of production chains, many components became unavailable. As a result, the work was disrupted. After three failed test launches, at the end of the 1990s the project was closed and its place was taken by a new project of a submarine launched ballistic missile, close to the land-based SS-27 Sickle B mobile missile. This is how the SSN-32 Bulava, or in English MACE, missile was born. Due to the change of the missile, the design of some of the elements of the submarine had to be changed. In addition, it also faced financial problems and the need to build new production chains. Given that the project has more than a thousand contractors, it was not an easy task. It was possible to simplify the task with a little trick. When building the first three boats, they used the already existing sections of the unfinished boats of the Project 971 Akula class. Despite the serious shifts in time, the first boat, Yuri Dolgaruki, was launched in 2008 and at the end of 2012 joined the Russian Northern Fleet. Then things went faster. Alexander Nevsky was laid down in 2004 and put in service in 2013 and a year later the fleet received the third boat, Vladimir Manamakh. The birth of Bulava at the beginning was also far from being so simple. The missile was being designed and worked out, in fact, for the entire first decade of the 21st century and many problems from time to time put the program on the verge of closing. But it made it to the finale and entered service, replacing the old missiles on the strategic carriers of the Russian fleet. By that time, having reached satisfactory performance of new boats, the fleet began to consider the prospects of their further modernization. 
This is what made the start of the Bore A project, which didn't radically change the design, but made many improvements to the elements, equipment and weapons. The base boats have some reservations in their capabilities, but the Bore A has realized the full potential of the project and can undoubtedly be considered a full-fledged strategic nuclear submarine of the fourth generation. The Bore has a length of 170 meters and a width of 13.5 meters, surface displacement of 14,720 tons and underwater displacement of 24,000 tons. A large ship, but of course much smaller and lighter than the Typhoon, close in overall dimensions to the American Ohio class submarines. The design is double hulled and its strength is enough to dive to a depth of 480 meters. The light hull has a rubber coating to reduce noise. The internal, durable hull is made of thick steel and has a special design with shock absorbers and noise reduction. The designers paid much more attention to the low noise of the boat than before, which gave its results. The general layout is familiar for modern submarines. In front is a hydroacoustic system, behind it is a weapons compartment followed by a command post, on top is a wheelhouse. The wheelhouse of the base Bores looks a bit unusual, the top protrudes forward. This is not only a design decision, but the need for additional space for equipment. On the Bore A version the design was changed and the front of the wheelhouse is already almost vertical. Behind the wheelhouse are ballistic missile silos and the power plant along with the reactor. Despite the fact that the Bore is smaller than the Typhoon, it cannot be called small. Internal volumes allow it to fit all the equipment and weapons, as well as many auxiliary rooms for a crew of 100 to 110 people, cabins, kitchens, recreation areas and even a bathhouse. All this, coupled with the nuclear power plant, gives the boat great autonomy. The only thing Bore cannot receive on its own is probably food, so the autonomy is nevertheless limited to 3 months. Of course there is also a rescue system here. In the stern of the boat there is a large rescue module, a kind of hefty float that can take the entire crew. The Bore is a nuclear submarine. The basis of its power plant is the OK-650V nuclear reactor with a thermal power of about 190 megawatts. The power generated by it is transferred to a steam turbine plant with a capacity of 50,000 horsepower and a pump jet, the first of its kind in the Russian Navy. It should improve hydrodynamics and most importantly reduce noise levels. The speed is 15 knots above water and reaches 29 knots underwater. Plus, the boat is equipped with two 410 horsepower retractable steering electric thrusters located in the stern. On the newer Bore A boats there are four of them at once. A pair of bow thrusters was added to the stern pair. Something similar is used on large ships. It won't get you very far, but if the main engine is disabled and to increase maneuverability, they can be very useful. Bore's main caliber is 16 SSN32 Bulava SLBMs. Silos with nuclear arrows are lined up in two rows in a large compartment behind the wheelhouse. The Bulava missiles are 12.1 meters long, 2 meters in diameter and weigh 36.8 tons. With a range of up to 9300 kilometers, it is capable of carrying several charges with a capacity of 100 to 150 kilotons each, depending on the variant. It is much more compact than the old missiles and in terms of size and mass is not far from the tridents. This made it possible to abandon the gigantic size of the boats as in the case of the Typhoon or large humps as in the case of the Delta IV. The base Bore's still have a small hump, but on the newer Bore A boats the silo section is recessed inside the contours of the light hull. Both the optimization of the design and probably the modernization of the missiles played a role. While the old ones were made on the basis of the SS-27 Topol, the new ones are already unified with the SS-29 Yars. Naturally, a submarine without torpedoes is not a submarine. The Bore is equipped with six 533mm caliber tubes, moreover the first three Bore's have as many as eight tubes. 
ammunition, 40 torpedoes, mines and even missiles, including cruise missiles. As befits a modern submarine, Bore is equipped with a huge amount of advanced communications, reconnaissance and combat equipment. The filling is the most complex and most advanced for the Russian industry. More than 600 kilometers of cable networks and about 100 kilometers of pipelines are stretched here. The main sonar instrument is the MGK-600B Irtysh Amphorabare complex, capable of detecting targets at a distance of more than 230 kilometers. It is followed by countless control, communications, electric warfare devices, locators, direction finders and, of course, two periscopes. Given that precisely the Bore is supposed to become the basis of the marine component of the nuclear triad, their number should be decent. By 2022, there are five boats in service, three base Bores and two Bore A. Several new boats are being built and the total fleet should reach 10 units. As a result, Project 955 Bore should become the only type of strategic missile carriers in service with the Russian Navy, at least until the middle of the century. Be that as it may, the idea of submariners of the late 1980s after three decades was realized. Modern boats are being seriously put into service, becoming the basis of the strategic submarine fleet of Russia. Let's hope that they will last the entire period without incident and without the need to fulfill their main task. This is where our story ends. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. There are still a lot of interesting things on the horizon.